Yo, what's up? This is your boy, Derry Branch here of Strike7Sports.com. And today I just want to talk about um, where do the uh, Memphis Tigers, you know, men's basketball program stands when it comes to the, you know, the current, you know, landscape of the NCAA tournament. So, as many of you, many of you already know, Memphis, you know, lost a game against the uh, Tulane Green Wave, which they it was an overtime loss, lost by school by one point, nine to eighty nine, and it kind of like put a damper on you know the aspirations to get into the NCAA tournament. They're still alive to get a bird, get a clinch tournament bird, but the uh, margin for error just got slimmer, slimmer and slimmer, you know. But uh, I'm just looking at the latest uh, bracketology uh, post by Joe Love and Lenardi of uh, ESPN College Basketball Guru. And right now he has Memphis as a last team in, you know. Uh, you got Texas A&M, a team that Memphis beat early in the year. First team out so they don't make it in the top seed, Purdue. But he has Memphis going into the uh, NCAA tournament. You got uh, Nevada, you know, Oklahoma State, Boise State. These, these are four teams that are part of, part of the uh, last four last four in conversation. And if you, you recall from last, uh, season, last season, uh, Boise State was a team that Memphis beat. Uh, they plucked Memphis went ahead and plucked one of their players, Emmanuel Acott, Acott off the team transferred, but then bounced to um, another program, uh, Western Kentucky. But they got Memphis as a uh, 11 seed uh, for the tournament, and I believe the last time I checked down here, they're gonna be in the uh, the West region. No, the South, the South, the South region, and number one seed would be Purdue. Number one seed is Purdue, uh, projected number one seed is Purdue. Two seed is UCLA, and we'll see. Let me see what bracket uh, Memphis is in. So they'll be playing like Iowa State or something if they get that far. Iowa State, Illinois. But anyways, man, um, it just the way this thing is set up, man. These uh rankings and all that, these brackets and Q Q uh, what is Ken Palm rankings and net ratings and all this other stuff. These metrics to get into the tournament. To me, this sounds just a little like college football, if you know what I mean. You know, as you know, a lot of people, you know, they say that they say that they want to make college football like college basketball, where there's a lot of teams, you know, playing to get into the playing in the, in the tournament in the playoffs, you know, upsets and things like that. But college basketball, college basketball have a lot of the the lingo, a lot of the you know the, the things, the metrics that are used in college football to determine playoff teams and rankings and what teams should be seeded, things, you know, things of that matter, you know, um, you know, things like uh, how you beat a team, um, the quality of the win you had, what type of team was it, um, this win, this victory is not seen in our eyes as a, a good win, a Q1 win or Q3 win or you know, kind of you just nonsense, you know. We don't see that win as a, um, a good win because they lost that team you beat lost to a bad team that they shouldn't have lost, they shouldn't have uh, lost to. So we're gonna we're gonna penalize you because of that. It just it just things that it, I just can't, I feel like this stuff is unnecessary, you know. I just think it should be determined by your wins and your losses on the court. They don't care. I don't care what type of um, opponent it was. I don't care what type of uh, the quality of, of the win was. You know what I'm saying? A win is a win. A loss is a loss. It shouldn't be about 
quad one wins and quad twos and Ken Pond rankings and you know this and that you know it's other analytical stuff and that shouldn't have nothing to do with it man it should have it should be the human human um based on human um decisions on the court you know just too much time too many times you know people behind the scenes do things that they shouldn't do to me and it's, it's kind of like it's kind of like college football man it's just the same type of the same type of lingo is in college football and is in college basketball you know but Memphis got got a lock in, bro. Memphis got to continue to continue to remain locked in, bro. Because um, that loss to Tulane hurt to me. You know, they lost to Tulane hurt, and they got it's no margin for error, man. You at least they at least got to beat um, Houston one time during the season, and you got to take care of Tulane during the tournament. Beat Tulane in the tournament. Um, play if you if you can play if you can face Houston again in the rematch. It'd be great if you beat them. But I think if you go your next four games, you go four and one. You like you possibly lose to Houston. You get you get them back in the rematch at home. Go to the tournament, the AAC tournament next month. Have a good outing. Avenge your loss against Tulane. Get to the uh conference finals and you lose or win or lose, I think that Memphis should be in. They should be in the tournament. But it just even, you know, it just baffling to me that Memphis has an 18 and 6 record and they have an 18 and 6 record, but they're on a bubble. Now I'm gonna show something else to y'all, man. I'm gonna show something else to y'all. Real quick. All right. Just hang on for a second, man. Yeah, that tripping the ropes. It is uh, acting up. All right. So these are, are the uh, the uh, CBS college. This, this is the AP top twenty-five. So I'm gonna just go ahead and look at some of these records of some of these teams that are ranked, man. You got Marquette at ten, at nineteen and six. Iowa State at eleven, sixteen and seven. Baylor eighteen and six, same record as Memphis. Xavier eight, nineteen and five. Kansas State nineteen and five. Um, TCU seventeen and seven. Indiana seventeen and seven. Providence eighteen and six. UConn nineteen and six. NC State nineteen and six. Creighton sixteen and eight. Rutgers 16, 16 and eight. These teams got identical records like Memphis. And they're in the top 25 and are most likely, well, I want to say most likely, they are a, given, a guaranteed lock to get into a tournament. As long as they stay ranked. It doesn't even matter, it doesn't matter if they move up or down. You know, and I just think that's kind of unfair to Memphis, man. Even Penny Hardaway says it, bro. 
even Penny Hardaway says that Memphis is getting disrespected. You know, he feels that they're getting disrespected. Um, the rankings and where they're seated at and that. I'm going to pull up the quote of what he said. I'm going to pull it up for us, for you. You feel like if they're getting disrespected? We got the quote right here. Penny Hardaway said, we know we can't lose anymore, he said, Wednesday. That's what DeAndre Williams said. Penny said, that's just how it is, he said. They just they expect to lose to a team they think we should beat. We drop 60 spots. Someone else loses to a team they shouldn't lose to. They drop one or two spots. They don't respect us at all. They don't even care that Alex Lomax and Malcolm Dandridge have missed extended time with injuries. They're still judging us as if, if we're should a pressure game for us. Quote. So, yeah, I agree with it, man. I agree with it, man. I just, how Houston, every year, Houston get up to a great start, and they, they're ranked automatically. Even even the preseason, preseason Houston is ranked, you know? So, they can miss me with that, man. Um, Memphis has got to handle business, man. They just got to, you know, lock in, um, don't cut them off. Stop that. That way they can stop these teams from getting to the line, making free throws, things like that. Cause that's how Tulane got into that game on Saturday. Uh, on Saturday, you know, stop the stop the um play defense without fouling. Um, continue to scope. Um, continue to have a good ball control control, and I think they'll win the game. They'll well they'll, they'll win the next couple of games, you know, but no no slip ups, you know, down the stretch against teams you should you shouldn't be losing to. Like uh, Temple, you know, they 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 starting to fade. Temple, um UCF, they they went downhill since they lost they uh beat Memphis. UCF, uh who else is out there? Uh, they beat South Florida the other day. You just can't. You know, no uh, margin for error down the stretch, man. They Wichita State. Well, yeah, I think Wichita State in there. But, well, they don't play Wichita State tomorrow. It's more right. But Memphis can't. Uh, other loss pretty much push you in NIT category. NIT. Lane, the entire tournament, the entire tournament. And when I say entire tournament, I'm talking about the entire AAC tournament to even have a shot. That's what you got to do. Um, I don't know if they're gonna um really look at those win a win against Houston as a um you know a, a qualifier for you if you lose one of these other these games that you shouldn't lose against. You shouldn't lose to. You know, one of these other teams, really, you know, so they just got to uh, finish strong down the stretch, man. They veteran team, man. They shouldn't have these uh, these issues that they have sometime in games, you know. They lost that game. They, they'll just had a – I just felt like they had a bad day on Sunday or Saturday against Tulane where they missed those – missing those free throws and all that. They just had a bad day. And they still hung in there with Tulane, you know. Had them on the ropes. But, all right. All right, man. For right now, man, give me a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Let me know how y'all feel. How you feel about Memphis's uh, tournament chances? Do you think, do you still believe they can get into the tournament? Do you think they'll split with Houston or sweep, or sweep them like they did last year? Also, check out strikeseversports.com for latest content on the NFL, the NBA, Memphis Tigers, and Grizzlies talk, content, and more. Have a blessed day. Peace. I'm out.